morning, Mr. Palmer. How are you, sir? Good, John. How are you doing? Oh, I can't complain. It's a Friday. We're a, a little a day late on the recording, but it's fine. It's a holiday weekend. It's Memorial Day weekend for anybody that wants to be completely out of sync when we get what? this up online. Why do you do this every time? You like I, you're it's, like it's a shtick, man. <laughs> you're killing me, dude. Killing me. I try. It's I remember try. this is this is Thursday, June first. Not when we're actually recording. We have to time. Yeah, I'll get you there one all day. All right, fine. All right. Okay. All right, okay. All right. So, um, but so, so anyways, the goofiness aside, how are you? Doing good. How are you? I can't complain. It's a, it's a, it's another day. I'm above ground. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we're recording, which is always fun. Yep. And today, unlike the last episode, we've got another guest. Yeah. So, all right. So now I'm going to go back and break my rule that I just imposed on you about 10 seconds ago. Uh, so... The, Last week. Rules for thee, but not for me, huh? <laughs> Last week was Mobility Field Day 9, and I presented, and there was somebody else who presented, um, Rajiv, and he was talking about um, a new feature that we have, and so I wanted to get him on the podcast. Now that we talked about it at Mobility Field Day 9, you can go watch that video link. Um, we'll put that in the show notes, or John will. Um, but we wanted to bring him on here. And talk about it on the podcast. That way you don't have to actually stare at a screen. So um, with that, Rajiv, thank you for joining us. Why don't you give us a, a little quick introduction about yourself and what is it you do? Hey, thank you, John. Uh, thank you, Jim. Thank you for inviting me here. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. It was very good to see you actually last yeah. last week. And um, I'll just introduce myself. I'm Rajiv Ayer. I'm a senior director in the product management team here at Ruckus, where we do cool radio stuff, and Cloud RRM is another cool stuff. And happy to share it with you. Nice. So, Cloud RRM. Now, John and I are. What would you call us, John? We're words. <laughs> well, okay. There's lots of things you'd call us. Um, <laughs> Most of it isn't appropriate for the podcast. Okay. Um, <laughs> so wireless geeks, wireless engineers. And I've had my own experiences with RRM. John, have you had experiences with RRM? Oh, sure. I've got the scars. I, so, <laughs> so Rajiv, I, why don't you walk us through instead of John and I and our jaded you know, scarred experiences. Uh, what is RM and then what is, and then the cloud RM? I mean, can you walk us through that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Certainly. <laughs> like the word jaded. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, we in the industry have seen various versions of radio resource management. That is RRM. We know that. Now, this version, we call it cloud RRM because it runs in cloud, obviously. However, this technology is fundamentally different in some sense, right? Now we have the compute in the cloud and we're using some graph AI algorithms to reduce the noise, reduce the co-channel interference down to zero if possible. That is the fundamental goal. We know that noise is something that is going to impact your uh, radio networks, your users are not, will not be able to connect if you have a very noisy network. So the whole goal of cloud RRM is to drive it down to as much uh, closer to zero as possible. For this to happen, what you really have to do is pick uh, channels and channel widths and jointly optimize that. And that's what we are trying to do in the cloud RRM. That's the high level. So my turn. Um, yeah. <laughs> what makes this implementation of RRM different than others? Because, I mean, like Jim and I said, we're, we've jaded, we've got the scars, we've, we've done this. This is a ruckus podcast, but we know every <laughs> vendor's got their own way of doing RRM. It's not, you know, it's not a ruckus uh, trademarked uh, you know, thing. So it's been around for a while. So what makes this one different? Yeah, but, uh, that's a good question, actually. It, the times are changing, uh, John. We are going to get a whole lot of spectrum coming our way. We'll get 1,200 megahertz, as you know, spectrum in the U.S. And with that comes a lot more complexity. And I think Jim covered it really well uh, in the last mobility field day. All the AFC requirements are coming in. 
and lot more channels like up to 59 channels uh, available new channels in on, on top of what we had so the way we have thought about cloud rrm is to bring help to the wifi admin already we all uh, we have 2.4 and 5 gig and we are going to add the 6 gigahertz spectrum we already have some of it in 6e what we are trying to do here is give them a optimal channel plan but we know and we have learned that there needs to be guardrails for this type of algorithm so even though the ai will come and suggest a channel plan for you we have built in the guardrails and those guardrails are something that i can talk more about yeah so that's i mean one of the reasons why um john and i are jaded um when it comes to rrm is you know we've been burned by it and so one of my favorite stories to tell is i came back into work on a, on a monday morning one time and i sat down at my desk and i and i fire up the you know i, I log into the controller and i look and every single one of my 5 gigahertz radios is set at channel 36 with maximum transmit power and i think i had the static uh, channel bandwidth at like 40 megahertz wide and it was like it was like ah it's like it's been and i go back and i find out it's been running like this for like 36 hours and this is at a facility that runs 24/7 and i was like oh no and so it's that point where you just say i can't do rrm because i've been burned by it so i'm really interested to, you said that you could talk more about these some of these guardrails i'm interested to, about those guardrails oh, certainly i mean i think uh, the experiences that you you've had those are not uncommon i mean we have lived through all of those things right we've learned from those experiences as well So that's the reason we built in the guardrails in the silgard. So the first thing we thought about was let's not shove anything down Wi-Fi admins throat. Show them exactly what we are going to change. So there is a prediction predictive power in the silgard. So even before the Wi-Fi admin uh, gets to apply that change, they see the change. this is how the channel plan is going to uh, from its current state to its future state this is what will happen and once you have that you can see visually how the interference is going to go down so you don't have to accept it but if the admin wants it they can click a button accept it so you're not sort of forced to make that change unlike the previous cloud rml burdens you turn it on it does its thing in here the cloud rm is always running and the admin has to look at it and they can decide oh this looks like a same change to me i'll apply that change that's the predictive power the second part is the scheduling power so you got prediction you got scheduling scheduling basically is just common sense right we we all know that you don't want to change channels during your busy hours so you you pick a time and uh, for dif- different zones and and ruckus controllers you have these zones and they can be very large and they can span different time zones also so each zone can have a different time which is a non peak hour and you can apply that change so we got prediction we got scheduling then you also have monitoring it doesn't mean that we are going to let it that it's not done at that point what we are saying is we set out predicting that there will be an improvement in the network we also give you by how much how much will the interference go down and then we'll monitor that change for 7 days we monitor the change and if the changes are not going towards what we said it would we revert that change so there is that rollback capability that's also built in so there is prediction where we tell you exactly how much it will improve then there is scheduling then there is monitoring and then there's rollback so all these things were not present in the first generation uh, cloud rm any rm algorithm so far so that's what makes it different does that help you yeah I like the I like the I like the idea of of 
you know, and I think we talked about this at Mobility Field Day. I think, you know, I like the idea of having that, you know, while I'm, I'm harnessing and leveraging that, the power of the compute in the cloud, I'm still not just sort of throwing up my hands and going, okay, whatever happens, happens, and then I'm left to pick up the pieces. So I, I like the idea that that there is that scheduling. And so on behalf of Wi-Fi engineers everywhere, thank you for, <laughs> for, for giving us that ability. So with, with that said, you know, we've got, you know, improved, uh, you know, under the hood and all that. But so what kind of environments are we seeing improvements in, operational improvements? Because it sounds like, I mean, this isn't hypothetical anymore, right? This is something that we've been using in production environments, right, Rajiv? Mm -hmm. Yep. <clears throat> so so this, what, what kind this, of improvements are we seeing? So we have uh, deployed it in production. It's been deployed since December, last December. So we have some real data now. We don't have to uh, estimate anything. We have real data. We have data in manufacturing. We have data from multifamily home environments. We have data from education environments, some hospitality data, all of that. And what we are seeing is a drastic reduction in co-channel interference. And in majority of these cases, we've seen it go down to almost zero. So co-channel interference is when APs are getting in each other's ways and basically client has to contend along with the APs to get access to the medium. But in this case, if you pick up channel plan that is keep giving different channels for different access points, the co-channel interference goes down to zero in many cases. That in turn gives us a better uh, client throughput, higher client throughput, lower their time utilization, and higher AP capacity. We have seen all of that. Nice. I'm actually kind of impressed. John and I were just messaging back and forth. I didn't realize that we had tested it in that many different environments. You know, I mean, because there are all the all the different environments and verticals that you named. You know, are all very unique in in how the RF operates and how you design them and so i'm actually i was like wow that's a lot more than i realized so it's really cool that we've been able to test it in all those different verticals and you know and realize that it's not just for one specific type of environment like you know oh, this only really works in warehouse or it only works in manufacturing so that's really cool that you guys have been able to test it that much yeah that that is sort of the um with cloud, you're able to do that more easily. In the prior generation cloud RRM algorithms, it was not running in the cloud. So that was a little harder to achieve that. So right now we can do that very quickly. Oh, actually I missed out the um, high density stadium environments, arenas. So we got actually very good, very good results there also. So Wow. So I, I got to ask, and this isn't on our list, so I'm cheating, Jim. So with like, with a, something like a stadium deployment, and mm -hmm. you mentioned the, the importance of scheduling RRM, because let's be honest, anybody that's ever used RRM, if you don't have it scheduled, aside from a DFS hit, it's it's the worst to have a change in the middle of the day because mm -hmm. it is a disruption. So how does that work with, cause, because stadiums are really probably, of all the environments you mentioned, they have to be the hardest to tune, I think. Because, you know, if I go in in the middle of the day, except for very particular scenarios where maybe they're hosting a convention or something like that, the arena is empty. Yep. And the RF in the bowl when it's empty is horrible because the bowls are designed to absorb when the people are there. So how does that work? Like when do you, when do you get to do the channel changes and, and like, right. what's, the, what's that like? <clears throat> right. So well, one of the things that we noticed is when you are learning the algorithm, learning the environment, the algorithm is looking at sort of the worst case in some sense, because there are no humans in the stadium and you have no attenuation between these APs. So you understand what is the worst case. And if you know that, you are able to design a channel plan that says, okay, all these APs are seeing each other all the time. Let me find a channel plan that works for that. And when you have a lot of people in the stadium, there is a natural attenuation that you get by just people being there. So that channel plan that you've already set actually make, makes it go better 
So some of the high density use cases, we are able to do a lot better uh, now because we actually planned for it already. And channel changes, of course, happen in non-peak hours, not during game time. Okay, nice. But that's still, I mean, that's, that's a pretty big deal because, I mean, like I said, those are those are some really dynamic environments. So I think any way to throw in that little you know bit of uh, AI and whatnot, I think that's, uh, that really helps. You know, that's something that I, you know, because Rajiv and I were actually talking about this bef right before he presented um, M-Mobility Field Day. And I think that's one of the things that I think, you know, I really liked about it the most was this idea of being able to, you know, sort of take all this information and then predict it and then model it. And if you go back and if you watch his presentation, he actually shows that model of what that sort of looks like which you know is, is really kind of fascinating and interesting but being able to predict and go i'm going to run eighty thousand different scenarios in the cloud you know using the the compute power of the cloud then come up with and we go hey we can test it all and so instead of having to you know how we do it in the past which is you'd make a change and then you go hey did this change work and we watch it in real time we go oh no that didn't work so now when you make these other changes so in the past it's always been a bake time but i love the idea that you know doing it in the in the cloud and having all that compute you get this predictive and go hey this is of all the iterations this is i think where we where we can go and so yeah. mm, that that's actually a good point because you have the compute you have a model of your network in in the cloud so we are able to run all those simulations if you will in the cloud rather than having to read by hand in a live deployment so yeah, that's a good point so ruckus has channel fly and i actually did a presentation mm -hmm. um, where, um now this was at wlpc where for a brief second in time i actually poked a little fun at channel fly um and so the elephant in the room now i think the question is you know with cloud rm does that mean that we're retiring or discontinuing channel fly or is channel fly still going to be a thing yeah, ChannelFly is going to be there. We are going to support it. And this is something that is our base offering, right? We need ChannelFly because we have environments where APs, it, ChannelFly runs on the APs. It's a local algorithm and it optimizes the RF neighborhood. It optimizes the link throughput, AP to AP. And it has its own merits. It is simpler in some sense and it will just run and it has a settling time when once the algorithm settles down, you get a channel plan at the end of it. You get the channel widths and all of that is done locally. Now, on the cloud, what we are thinking is the design of AI-driven cloud RRM is to tackle the newer challenges that are coming our way. We are going to get more spectrum. We are going to get ready for all those uh, complexities that are coming our way. And we wanted to move beyond channel fly along these four or five axes, the predictive power, the monitoring, the scheduling, the rollback, all of that is new. That doesn't come back to channel fly. So we are evolving. And it's probably the biggest step we are taking since Beamflex in radio management, I would say. Channel fly stays. Okay. Nice. Okay. Um, and that's good to know because, I mean, a lot of people, like Jim said, that's, you know, there's there's a couple things that we've got out there that have been out there as part of Ruckus for a long time, Beamflex, Channelfly, uh, and and, uh, and so on. And so it would be, I think it would be a big shock to the system to, to see that. So it's nice to see that they're you know, that's sticking around. So anybody that's listening to this and isn't doing Cloud RM, take a deep breath. Um, <laughs> but so with that said, um, I don't know that I've got much in the way of questions. I have one last one that I can toss out there and Gemma if you've got anything else we can kind of follow up on that obviously but Rajiv what is like one thing um, if I'm the listener and I am a listener um, <laughs> what would you want me to take away from this conversation Ah, oh, okay I think AI driven cloud RM is the biggest advance that we have done since Beamflex 
and it has four properties that are very very different which is predictive power scheduling monitoring and rollback all of these four um properties of this cloud rm algorithm really distinguish it from the past attempts that we have made that the industry has made and that's what gives it the power that's why it needs to run the cloud do do give it a try all right so you i do have another question because i actually I, I actually take notes i have my little notepad here and i take notes okay. about what said but you you said something early on that i want to kind of come back to mm -hmm. um now i thought you said something about a graph ai algorithm or something like that oh. um you i i want to know more i mean uh, I think we have about 10 minutes left so you got plenty of time but um what exactly you know when you say graph ai algorithm mm -hmm. is it or okay first off is that what you said i said <laughs> graph ai algorithm no kidding okay all right so well, two people like me and john who are again old fuddy duddies what exactly does that mean what is a graph ai algorithm all right all right let's break it down right the graph networks like you have a bunch of access points deployed you can't see it all in one room i'm, I'm sitting here and there are probably 40 access points in this building i can see eight of them but these access points can see other access points so it is actually like a node and a graph and you scale it up you have multiple different buildings multiple different zones all of these form the best way to visualize this is a graph. It's like a, now these nodes are also now divided in different spectrum. In 2.4 gigahertz, some radios are seeing some other radios. In 5 gigahertz, some radios are seeing some others. If you walk into an environment, you get a sense of saying, huh, that looks like an AP too much there, or there is no AP there, that's a dead spot. You, as an RF expert, have that intuition. But obviously, you don't want to go through every single facility to figure out where the APs are deployed in high density or maybe they're dead spots. So if you give AI this graph that we built, and that graph is learned by the data that we get from the controller, it is able to tell you what you are seeing humanly when you walk into a node it will tell you exactly what the clustering density is in what places and where it is not so it learns all that so that is the graph part of it and the ai will help you sort of transform what you know as a gut feel into something that's very mathematical so we got that part so now we can make some good decisions based on where the dead spots are there are some high density areas where are some uh, low coverage areas all of that we can find that then the part the interesting part is to see if there exists a channel plan that will make these ap's not interfere with each other the co-channel interference now if you think about it that's actually a hard problem because you can see one ap and that APC is another AP. And you can say, hey, that's on channel six, I'm in channel one, let's just, that there is no co-channel interference. If you see this AP is on channel one, the other AP is channel one, let's change my channel to six. But there's an AP that you cannot see, that's also on channel six. So that algorithm, if you want to scale it up, it has to be run in the cloud. And now you're creating, coming up with a solution using graph AI, graph AI, which will say, I have now run through those 80,000 different scenarios or more to give you a solution that is driving down co-channel interference to as minimal as possible. Zero is what we want to drive to. That is what the graph AI technology is doing, really. And for those who are wondering, when he says C, the other AP is talking about an RF level, which, you know, is, which is, it's just really, is really hard because, you know, I was in the office last week 
And I happened to look up and, oh, by the way, there's more than 40 APs in that building. <laughs> uh, that's a that's a whole other topic. But, um, you know, and for a trained person, it's, you know, it's not easy, but it's you're a little bit better at going, OK, this is, you know, I'm pretty sure that this type of interior wall is, you know, just 3db so it's like yeah i'm pretty sure that they this ap in this room and this ap in this room can probably you know from an rf perspective see each other but you know a lot of times we don't you know you might think that it's a 3db wall and so that's where that seeing part comes in it's because it, it's taking all of this stuff you know that the ap's learn about its environment and that's how that's that's where the seeing part comes in for those people that don't aren't quite sure how that works. It's actually a, a sounding thing that happens, you know, in the background of the APs as it learns its environment, which actually, as I learned after Mobility Field Day, also ties into AFC. So this whole, you know, learning and understanding where the AP lives at an RF level within the environment that is deployed is actually quite critical for several different features. So that's, but, it, and, is, so the graph AI algorithm, last follow-up to this, that's the, the the graphs that you were showing in your presentation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, all right. So, yeah, when you go watch that video, um, that's the the little um, little charts that he, was, that, that he was showing off. So, all right. So that makes more sense now. I'm good. <laughs> well, I don't know about good, but I'm mean... <laughs> good for a gym. Um I mean, I really don't have, I think, too much for this one, uh, but it sounds like, well, I'll add this one last thing and sort of a comment and a tease it up for a, a future return visit for Rajiv, um, as we like to have our guest back. Um, let's be honest, we have a, a small family of Ruckus employees, so we've, you know, we've got to keep everybody in the loop. But so with it being in the cloud, with it being cloud RRM, um, how, like, is it on any sort of an updated schedule? Like, is this going to be tweaked and tuned and, and fine-tuned on, on a fairly regular basis or what's your expectation of like 6 12 18 months what's the what can we expect constantly from working on it john i mean oh. as we this is this is cloud delivery right so we we try not to uh, shove in a lot of changes big changes and things like that but it's constantly being worked on nice. you will see okay. a lot of good things come out with uh, ai driven cloud rm and in general, we think that's the way to go. The complexity of this network is going to only increase. The spectrum access rules are changing. The rules of driving on the road are actually changing. And most of those things are making, making it harder. I mean, uh, Jim talked about the MLO, dynamic link selection. We do not want to transfer the burden of all that to a human Wi-Fi admin. So we are going to get some algorithmic help and AI-driven cloud RM is our solution. That's good stuff. Yeah. That's all I have. Uh, Mr. Palmer, I don't know if you have any other Why don't I give you uh, an extra piece of information? How about Ooh, that? There we go. <laughs> I love that. I, li I like it. He's pulling out the Steve Jobs one last thing. Right. I like it. It's <laughs> more than one last thing. I'm, I'm just saying that uh, I did say that it runs in the cloud in the cloud in Ruckus Analytics, and it does require a license, right? Now, many people come and ask us, uh, what happens if the license uh, expires? Will all my channels reset to whatever it was before? No, we will not do that. So we will take a very responsible decision. It, whatever Cloud RM ran last time, whatever is the result best, whatever we know was the best, that will stay. And then the channel plan will be at that point handed over to the admin and we will not reset it back to basics. So please don't worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that because I'm pretty certain somebody listening to this is going to get is thinking that as we're talking, they're like, wait a second. And I wouldn't think to ask that. So thank you. <laughs> nice. Good to know. Uh, well, I, I, Unless Rajiv's got another, uh, you know, surprise out of his out of his hat, I don't think I have anything else. Mr. Palmer, do you have anything else to to cover? Ask, bring up, mention? You'd, well, you know, you you were talking about, and this is still such. I mean, to me, I've heard about this for a while, but it's still sort of such a new thing that um, 
I would like to ask Rajiv if he, you know, if in six months or whatever, as we've had time to sort of think about this and learn more about it, if you'd be willing to come back and discuss more, because I mean, like I said, John and I have been chatting and we have some notes and it's like, well, what? And it's, and so maybe we can come bring you back another, another time. And, uh, and we can do a little bit more of a, maybe a focused on just one or two key points. Um, and, and do a little bit deeper dive if, if you're okay with that. What date is it? Five. <laughs> 26 right <laughs> so how about we talk talk back in a couple of months maybe or let's say a quarter yeah in a quarter let's so well we got to figure that out because we're, we're busy people we're in demand here uh but no, <laughs> <laughs> um we, well but if you're willing to come back we'll get you we'll get you back in and we'll do it that way we can do you know a little bit deeper dive and have some better questions and better notes but yeah, if you're if you're game, then we're game. So thank you for that. Oh, cool. Um, all right, last call. Because every time I said it, we've got <laughs> one, which is good. I like it. We've been on last <laughs> call for like five oh, minutes gosh. now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, if, if there's nothing else, I don't have anything. Um, we can call it a wrap for the day. Uh, Rajiv, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know, um, you know, being in your position, it's uh, you've got a lot of demands on your time. So I appreciate it, and. Uh, yeah, definitely. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Hey, thank you for having me there. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, Jim, Rajiv, have a great, uh, well, officially, as Jim said, it's June 1st. So have a great rest of your Thursday. Um, <clears throat> wink, wink, nod, nod. But enjoy the weekend. Don't celebrate too hard. Um, relax. Enjoy the time off. And, uh, yeah, we look forward to having you back on in a few months, Rajiv. Yep. All right. And we are music. I had to find the stop recording button.